Side 2 begins with Night in the City, which, like Across the Border, starts with a bit of city ambience before we get some rather anxious sounding violins and finally a rocking guitar to ease the tension into a more usual yet still very grooving song that's more or less standard of ELO's musical style combining modern pop rock elements with classical strings. While the previous track dealt with trying to catch a border crossing train, this one seems to start with a woman standing at an airport and looking down the strip, likely having entered an aeroplane or exited one. The 747 had just left gate 11 and is leaving the ground and there's no turning back. Until the plane realises it had left its glasses back at home and needs to fly back down to get it. Then Jeff himself enters the story as he stands at a dockside, staring out to sea and spotting her, but she doesn't see him. Probably because she's million of, millions of miles out at sea. Just saying. However, she stands without hope because she missed the boat, so she heads back to the city. That's when we get to the chorus, which gets a little bit sinister as Jeff sings about a night in the city and the madness at midnight driving you insane. I guess she had a, has a case of Manhattan Rumble, if you know what I mean. Anyway, this chorus alone does seem to capture what it may feel having to walk through busy and seemingly endless city streets, especially late at night. The anxiety that can come of such. Although, I used to think that the line driving you insane sounded like driving USA. And it still kind of does sound a bit like that, to be honest. It is quite honestly among the more underrated songs of ELO, and I would recommend giving this a chance to listen. Next is Starlight, a more mellow and softer track that kind of sounds a bit like Bee Gees mixed with When You Wish Upon a Star from Disney's Pinocchio. The original one from 1940, of course, not the recent one by Robert Zemeckis. Jeff sings about, what else? A starlight, as if it were a lover of some sort, hearing her calling out to him and rolling across his mind again. Maybe this is about that love between Ray the Firefly and the star Evangeline from Princess and the Frog. This might be, might be the first of many examples of Jeff Lynne's songwriting in this album that may involve an anthropomorphic theme of sorts, as we'll eventually see more of from here on in certain tracks. In the serene, fairy tale like chorus, he says to stop fooling around and keep your feet on the ground. Or else he'll probably put cement shoes on your feet or something. Or use glue perhaps. She had him all summer long as, as she rolls across the night. This is the kind of music to listen to while drifting onto a deep, happy and peaceful sleep before dreaming of floating and flying through the beauty of space. Both the strings and the synth really do come together to make this work. And I gotta give kudos for that alone. Starlight Belly Electric Light Orchestra. It may not be the Superman lovers, but it comes close enough. After that, we enter the simply titled Jungle, which, fittingly enough, after a brief bit of surreal synth, we hear a bit of rainforest ambience, animal sounds, tribal-esque drumming, and even a Tarzan-style yell. Then the strings striking with frabjousness, as Jeff recalls standing in a jungle, feeling alright, wandering in the darkness in the middle of the night. Then when the moon begins shining, he soon sees a clearing ahead. And when he goes to check it out, we're greeted with a nonsensical yet still catchy earworm of a chorus. It's gibberish essentially, but it's catchy gibberish. Jeff finds and discovers hundreds of animals gathering around and singing together a lovely song under the pale moonlight. That song no doubt being Dancing in the Moonlight by Boffalongo, though many of you would be probably be more familiar with the cover version by Top Loader. Then a, lion, then a lion comes up to Jeff and offers him to 
join them, come join them if he so desires. So who do you think this lion might be? King Leonidas from Ben Dobbs and Broomsticks? King Richard from Robin Hood? Or Mufasa from The Lion King? You make the call. Now I could explain and interpret in depth the meaning of this track, but it, it actually does just that for me. As Jeff asks, what meaning may this song they sing have? And the answer is, and I quote, Wondrous is our great blue ship that sails around the mighty sun and joy to everyone that rides along, unquote. At first, one might think refers to the spaceship on the cover, but this great blue ship sailing around the sun might actually be the planet Earth itself, since it, since it is often referred to as the blue planet or the pale blue dot. Then the song itself ends with what sounds like an alarm clock going off and echoing, as if this whole dance and adventure had been just a dream all along, and we're only now waking up from it. I wonder if it's yet another dream by that dreamer from the El Dorado album. Hmm. This continues on the trend of funky, jungle-themed pop music, after Disney's 1967 adaption of the Jungle Book, and the song Jungle Boogie by Colin the Gang. And if you like those stuff, I definitely recommend checking out this one too. We then get a very short and mostly instrumental track called Believe Me Now, which could be seen as an interlude of sorts, with a duration of about a minute and 20 seconds. Though I do say it's mostly instrumental since among the seemingly somewhat somber sounding strings, piano and drums, we could hear Jeff presumably saying, can you hear me in a heavy delay filter? Then a vocoded voice, likely Richard Tandy, singing, believe me now, I could never say goodbye, don't leave me now, believe me now. What this likely means, or whether or not it's actually answering Jeff's line, I'm not entirely sure, but it's still an interesting piece, little piece of music nonetheless. Side 2 ends with Stepping Out, a tender rocking ballad to close out the first half of this album. And it does so quite well. It deals with having to pack up things, preparing to leave, and saying goodbye to friends, family, and all else you knew. For he is stepping out to move on and see the world like a rolling stone. He's going to be somebody. Before then, he was a nobody as a result of Master Zaynoth's experiments with the Heartless. Although a particular line that might be worth noting would be one that occurs early on on the track, just before the first chorus. But then again, who knows about the rain? Another line also worth of note is one that occurs after the first chorus, or in the first, in the, in the first or second verse. They said the rain would fall, but what do they know? These two mentions of rain may likely be a connecting foreshadow for what's about to come soon after. But we'll get into that soon enough. For now though, Jeff Leia sings that he saw your face and the song you were singing. Though he thought he knew the words, the song was quite absurd and out of key. Bit judgmental there, Mr. Lin. I'm all for constructive criticism, but not everyone could sing or hum on perfect exact key or pitch. Near the end, we get to hear that vocoded voice once again, singing the song title as well. And it's like hearing a sad lonely robot singing out its electronic heart. It's quite touching, actually. Then the song has something of an extended outro, with some orchestral instrumentation similar to what we might have heard in Face the Music, a previous ELO album. And as decent an ending it may be, it might barely compare to what's about to come next. <laughs> 